first Assassin's Creed raised the bar with its run anywhere, climb anything core, but its rigid design kept it from classic status. Two years smarter, Assassin's Creed 2 is the product of fan feedback. The danger is that you could end up with a game that's simply what the first one should have been. Does it go a step further to become one of the industry's greats? Provided no one spoiled it for you, the first Assassin's Creed had a story with a clever twist. Now that the secret is known, the story in Part 2 has to rely on substance instead of gimmicks. It's all rooted in late 15th century Italy, where a young scrappy Ezio Auditore is forced to grow up fast when his father and brothers are murdered. He makes revenge his priority, and the chase is on to bring the Templars to justice. You kill Uberto Alberti. I understand your desire for vengeance, but the Gonfaloniere is a powerful man. Spanning a decade, just when you think you've snuffed the final threat, yet another emerges. It's the old dangling carrot scenario, and by the end of the game, it starts to look a little wilted. Ezio meets people, and five minutes later, he's killing for them with no questions. Just tell me what needs to be done, and I'll see that it is. The writing holds up well, the authenticity is impeccable, and appearances by legends like Leonardo da Vinci provide it with some built-in interest. Leonardo! Ezio, so good to see you. How can I help you? Almost all of the game takes place inside the virtual world of the Animus, leaving the opportunity for a real duel story on the table. Do you want to stop? No, I need to go back, right now. The most popular complaint lodged against the original Creed was its repetitive mission structure. There simply wasn't enough variety, and once the wonder of parkour wore off, it could become a grind. The number of mission types are nearly tripled in the sequel, yet you'll still tire of trailing, racing, or killing groups of targets because the game is longer. Missions are much more involved, at least, with some having multiple parts with checkpoints in between. What are you and your allies planning? Is this what my father discovered? Divided into a handful of cities like Florence, Venice, Forli, Tuscany, and Rome, there's a lot more to keep track of this time around. Weapons and armor can be bought from a blacksmith or earned, doctors sell health potions, tailors offer new robe colors, and art stores sell maps to help you keep track of it all. There's also a lot of things to collect, like feathers, chests, and codex pages. You actually get rewards for finding them this time, but it's much easier just to pay for the rewards. The economy is unbalanced by the villa, a town all your own where you can pay to build and upgrade shops for discounts or civic services to attract citizens. The more people living in the villa, the more money you make from taxes. If you concentrate your cash on upgrades, it pays off in spades, and eventually you're making more money than you can spend, making some of the collectibles pointless. Between all the doodads, missions, and shops, the map gets crowded quickly. You can spend as much time as you want traveling and tackling side missions, but there's one definitive path to the end. And when you do get there, you're forced to go back and collect all of one specific item before you can move on to the final sequence. Even without the last second goose chase, you'll get 18 to 20 hours from Assassin's Creed 2. And even more if you're a pack rat. If they succeed, if we lose Lorenzo and Firenze falls to the Pazzi, it will not come to that. <laughs> Run, boy. Fast. Like the first game, gameplay is divided between navigation and combat. How Ezio runs, climbs, and jumps across the terrain has the same strengths and weaknesses it had before. Going from point A to point B as quickly as possible benefits from the automatic jumping and wall scaling. But when precise platforming is required, automation can cause problems. Combat has been expanded, though, again, the same problems arise. Enemies are more than happy to stand around and wait to be felled by counter kills, and those that don't simply require a dodge before slashing. You can disarm enemies and use their weapons against them, and enemies can return the favor. There's nothing worse than not being able to find your uber sword after a skirmish. With a world this large, a horse isn't going to cut it. You can warp from one city to another, but you can't zap within a city. Instead, you have to select another town and then teleport right back to the point you want. I'm going to teach you how to survive. Come. The blend button made for some ridiculous scenarios in the first game, and this time, it's simply a matter of walking with crowds of people at the right speed. The throngs of people serve another purpose as well, since you can hire prostitutes or thieves to distract guards <laughs> or fight on your side. Larger scale battles are definitely 
one of its distinctions. Shoot! Shoot the flying demon! You get new weapons this time, mostly thanks to Da Vinci's workshop. As you collect blueprints, he'll build you upgrades to your hidden blade that allow for dual assassinations or to discharge it like a gun. He also provides contraptions like wings that allow you to soar across the city, but you hardly use them. The final new gameplay component is water. You can dive in to easily evade enemies or hop on a gondola to travel more quickly, giving you options beyond the cabana. Outwardly, Assassin's Creed 2 may appear to have overhauled its gameplay, but many of the same strengths and weaknesses remain. Poor AI hurts the combat, and the parkour is incredible, until you're asked to be precise. If you've ever been to Italy, then you will be absolutely blown away at the authenticity paid to the environments. While not an inch-by-inch -inch replication of each city, the major landmarks are recreated with startling accuracy. There are even historical entries to read if you're so inclined. If you're interested in visiting the country, but doubt you ever will, this is the next best thing. Ah, Virbante! The visual quality is basically the same, and both the PS3 and 360 versions share the same limitations. It can draw large, detailed environments, but things aren't as impressive up close, and details like shadows draw in. The animation is still silky smooth, and the new counter kills are sweet. But some character models look funky up close, and the frame rate will jitter. The sheer volume and quality of the voice acting is commendable. I feel your tired body in need of comfort and succor. But I have such aches and pains, sister. I may need a great deal of comfort and succor. Oh, that can be arranged. And small details like Ezio aging during the course of the game help set it apart. I still have some time for that private lesson. Assassin's Creed 2 has plenty of fixes and additions, but the story can drag, and the sense of awe that the parkour provided two years ago is muted. Yet new mission types, freedom from a linear quest, added depth, and a stronger historical bent fortify the overall experience. There's still no other game quite like it, and whether you dismiss the first game or absolutely loved it, this is one creed worth taking. I'm not ready. We rarely are. Che la morte non sia crudele.